Hey guys, it's Nick and in this video I want to talk about the ARC Innovation ETF and some potential problems that could be happening with it very soon. Now the NASDAQ was down about 2% today and the ARC Innovation ETF was down about 5% and it is now down 26% off of its high of $160 just what two months ago. Now, I did a video about the ARK Innovation ETF back in late January, comparing it to the internet ETFs during the internet bubble that went up like 100% a year and then came crashing down like, I don't know, 70, 80, 90%, something along those lines. Does ARK have the same kind of potential to come crashing down if the market falls a lot? Let's take a look at, again, what they hold and the really risky stuff that they hold, the small cap stuff that could really get them in trouble. So if you are holding this ETF or are thinking of buying it, you're going to want to watch this video before you consider what to do with your money. I like to look at monthly charts to get an idea of the general move on which way a stock or index is going. And looking at the QQQ, it definitely looks like it is having a big problem up here in these last three months. Some people call this candlestick pattern rising in agony. And it's a little bit like the Greek myth of Sisyphus that has to keep pushing up the rock up the hill and it keeps rolling back down on him. Looking at the ARK Innovation ETF, you see the same pattern here, but it's even a little more pronounced, I would say. So consider it like this. Imagine you're rolling a rock up a hill, and this is a monthly chart. So every month, this is how far you get the rock up the hill. You start from here, you roll it up to here, and it rolls back a little bit, and you end up here. The next month, you start here, you get it up to here. Uh, this month, you start it up here, you get it up a little bit, but it rolls all the way back down, and then right at the end, you get it back up to this level. So here you see that it's kind of rising in agony, meaning you start here, you get it all the way up to here, but it rolls back to you up to this level. Then you start from here, you roll it all the way up to 150, but it rolls back because you don't have enough strength to push it up to 130 something. Then you start here at 140 this month, you roll it all the way up to 160, but you don't have enough strength and it pushes all the way back to 125 and you ended up here around 130. Now this month, it starts around 135, it gets close to 130, and it's been rolling all the way back down to like 118 where it is now, as if it's kind of the person pushing the rock is running out of energy to keep pushing it up the hill. And when that happens, it's very easy for that rock to roll downhill very quickly. Kathy Wood's ETFs have been very successful over the last few years, and in just the last year, they grew their assets under management from $3.6 billion to $50 billion. That huge run-up in assets could become a really big problem for them if it already isn't a big problem for them. Number one, their top three stocks in the ARK Innovation ETF make up 20% of its weight, which is a very high concentration. And most of the reason she got a lot of this new investment is because Tesla being her biggest position and Tesla going gangbusters last year. So that got a lot of people interested in Tesla and therefore in the ARK Invest ETF. The problem is that with all that new money coming in, you can't just only buy Tesla stock. You have to buy other things to try to move the needle by spreading it to a lot of smaller, more riskier companies. They find themselves buying uh, large positions in these small companies to the point where they own 10% or more in these small biotech and pharmaceutical and all these other kind of supposedly innovative companies. But now with its biggest position, Tesla, off about 40% from its highs, the cracks are starting to show and the shorts on Wall Street are starting to take notice. And in this article on Zero Hedge, Michael Burry says the shorts will be ruthless to Kathy Wood. And so already they are 
no longer disclosing all of the trades that they used to disclose every day. That used to be kind of a boost to them because they would disclose, hey, we just bought this stock and all these people, these small traders or Reddit, Robinhood, whoever would pile in because they would think if it's good enough for Kathy Wood, it's good enough for us and it's gonna go up because they're a big fund and they're buying it. Now they're saying they include initial secondary public offering transactions and ETF creation and redemption unit activity. So they're trying to hide a little bit of what's going on because they're having outflows now. Instead of all of these inflows that they've been having uh, in the last year or so, now people are starting to redeem their ETF units out of this fund. And here, this chart shows the put options, open interest on the ARK Innovation ETF. They're hitting uh, all-time highs here, and they are higher than the call open interest. So people are starting to get a lot more bearish on ARK Innovation ETF than the bulls. And so the big shorts, Michael Burry said that on Sunday, he thought that she was too early and too hot, he tweeted. Today, short sellers are timid, but Wall Street will be ruthless in the end. Because out of the 29 stocks in ARKK that they own 10% or more of, only five of them have seen more put than calls trade on average over the last five days. Meaning people haven't really started piling onto the shorts on these small cap stocks that ARK owns a whole lot of. And so they would be very illiquid to get out of if they needed to cash out of them because of more people redeeming units in the ARK ETF. So here this guy says ARK is facing daily fund outflows of 1.4% of their assets under management this week. They're trimming all positions as this happens, but ARK's most illiquid positions are shit codes or are crappy companies listed here by the number of days it would take ARC to exit based on average daily volume. In other words, ARC owns a whole bunch of these small cap companies. Look at the market cap is 2 billion, 1 billion, 2 billion, 800 million, 900 million. Yet they own large percentages of it, 16%, 17.7, 16, 21, 15.6. And so based on the 30 day average volume that these stocks trade, if they wanted to get out of these stocks, it would take them 19 days to do it for MTLS, 17 days for CERS and, and so on. And that doesn't include the other participants in the market who might also wanna be selling these stocks at the same time as the market is going down. So instead of selling some of these less liquid small stocks while they can to make room for potential redemptions coming if the market keeps falling, they've actually been selling their most liquid stocks like Amazon, Apple, Google, and instead bought more Tesla as it falls, which it's down about 40% from its high of 900 or so, and this small Vuzix stock and a bunch of others. So you would think that ARK has a plan for all this and they have all kinds of risk models and being a $50 billion asset company that they have you know, some seasoned risk officer that has been through a few uh, downturns and has all kinds of risk models and stuff like that. Well, this tweet says, ARK Invest has no chief risk officer on its website. ARK's chief operating officer, Tom Stott, According to his LinkedIn profile, uh, pr prior to joining ARC, he was the account executive at WILX-TV, a local station for Lansing, Michigan. ARC is known for hiring employees with non-traditional backgrounds. Well, I hope that doesn't come back later to bite him in the you-know-what. Guys, Mike Tyson famously said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. So I don't know if ARK has a plan to get out of these illiquid positions. If the market keeps falling, uh, that has yet to be seen. But what they may think is not correlated right now, meaning the S&P, Tesla, Bitcoin, uh, these small cap biotech stuff, when the market is tanking, 
the correlation of everything goes to one. Everything goes all down at the same time. And if you are scrambling to uh, pay back redemptions and you have to sell these very illiquid stocks that you own very large pieces of, um, what happens is on Wall Street, uh, the other people on Wall Street are not your friend. They're not saying, oh, poor Kathy Wood, you know, she owns 16% of this small stock and the market is falling. Let's not short the stock because uh, that will hurt her. No, they're like, they find these things and say, which ones can we turn the screws on the most to cause the most pain for ARK Invest so that they have to dump at even lower and lower prices so that the people that are buying puts and shorting these things are making the maximum amount of money off of this. This is nothing new on Wall Street. This happened with the blow up of long term capital management. Um, when the people on Wall Street found out how big the positions are in long term capital management and they started having a problem, they started turning the screws and taking the other side to force them to liquidate at worse and worse prices. And so this is what Mike Berry is talking about, that Wall Street is just getting started sniffing around these positions. And at the first sign of weakness, which we're kind of seeing now in the NASDAQ, uh, they might start piling on to these really small illiquid positions. And then, so that's on one end, that's on the small illiquid side. Add the other side of Tesla being down a lot already. If Tesla continues to fall and then, you know, uh, the mother of all storms, Bitcoin starts coming down or something, uh, this could get really ugly really quick for the ARK Innovation ETF. One thing to be aware of is this chart of the Goldman profitless tech company basket. It's been going up like crazy until it doesn't. And ARK Innovation ETF, two thirds of their holdings are profitless companies, companies that did not earn a profit in the last year. Even the Russell 1000 growth uh, chart is falling down below its trend line. And this is the biggest dip for ARC since the pandemic started at the initial dip. So when the market starts falling a lot, people look at their portfolio and they look at the most liquid names and the so-called blue chips of, let's say, the tech industry, the Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, those kinds of things. When even those stocks are falling, uh, people lighten up on those, but then they really lighten up on the small speculative stuff. And so those things go down a lot faster than the big names. And so this is the problem with the ARK Innovation ETF is that they have large positions in these small names. So when Wall Street starts pushing on those and shorting them, uh, that could cause a lot of pain, especially if the rest of the market is going down as well. It could become like, <laughs> you know, Sisyphus getting rolled all the way down the hill by a big boulder. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.